I showed my wife the ad. She's like, what the hell are you going to do with that? I was like, I don't know, but I got to have it. <laughs> Race cars ain't made to be driven around parking lots. Yeah. We're back out here at Rockingham. It's like stock car day here. There's a lot. All kinds of regular cars are on the track right now, but everything here is some type of old NASCAR, tribute car, something, something along those lines. Just looking at this. It's like, what is that little thing? That's like the overflow vent, and it's got a thingy over to be extra aerodynamic. I really want to know the backstory on this car. It's either used to be a real car, or it was built like one to a T. It's just really, really cool. The history on this car well it was um it was a test car for years it was a backup car then it became a test car and um then apparently one of ron newman's friends bought it back in the day when they i guess when they retired it and um then he sold it through a dealership like a contingency thing and we went up there and we bought it and then ron newman came up there and he signed the dashboard so was this was this car ever raced before it was a test car or was it always a test car it was, it was always a backup then a test car huh. uh, ron newman said that this was the test car they ran every single test Hmm. That, 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 that is, I don't know if that's confirmed, but that's what he said. <laughs> yeah. I choose to believe it, but it's a better story. What's the setup in it? The setup in it right now, it's, it's, it's set up for this track. It's got, uh, of course it has the, the R5 cup engine in it. Um, and I put these little brake ducks in myself. Very Alabama redneck style. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a zip tie. Probably gonna fill this thing Thanks, guys. so here's ken schrader yeah. not really it's a cool fire suit we're about the same size but i got my thumb <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's the deal with this car well um i've been buying trading and selling old ratty nascars just the cheapest sweaty junk that you can find just to make a dollar or maybe i'll fix it up and i figured out you can't really build them cheaper than you can buy them done so i flipped enough cars to be able to buy this and i bought this off pete Pistoni. Tiger Tom's son, um, that's his firstborn. He had it in the Sportsman Series, ran it probably four or five years. Uh, he, he ran pretty good. He qualified the top five some, ran some top five finishes at Charlotte. And uh, when the series ended, well, Pete parked it. He parked it at his dad's shop for a while, then it went to his house and was in his man cave. And um, I guess Pete's just ready to let it go and he put it up for sales. Price was a little high. But we came together on a number that, that worked. And so here it is. And, you know, it is what it is as far as sportsmen. There's no real history. We kind of thought maybe it was uh, like the Levi Garrett car. Yeah. But those cars were mostly white. Here's some of that damage we just did today. That car. You see the yellow? Yeah. So that's the first layer of paint. Interesting enough, right past the yellow superflow pink. Huh. Um, but the, the Levi Garrett cars were all white mostly with a yellow nose. Yeah. These cars all yellow at the base. Yellow floor pans, yellow interior, yellow chassis. So it leads me to believe it's either the Michael Waltrip All Pro number 30 or the number 94 Kodak car. Huh. They had they had a Pontiac and they ran the body. So like everybody else. I wanted to come do this. So this is just the car I ended up with. Uh, cars, these cars, just they find the right owners. Over there's a couple guys that are great examples of that. So 
I got to do enough to just taste it just a minute ago. And that's unreal, man. It's so much fun. So if you haven't bought a stock car, you need to buy one. Well, working on that. <laughs> some of the other videos. Oh. <laughs> a little worse than you thought. Yeah. Smash be good. So it's all factory stuff. You even got the gaskets in it. This was never a cup car? It was a cup car. It was, and then it got moved to Sportsman. Sportsman, and then it was parked. Now Mike Harmon hold the track down. Thanks, Mike. I'll probably miss the session. Uh, I think it's either the Kodak car or Michael Walter's off-road car. If I had, that's where I'm at now. Um, but it's just, uh, you know, you can buy these machines. I paid 13 grand for mine. Which was maybe just a little bit more than it was worth, but how many how many like former Cup car Aero Coupes are laying around? That's though? the thing. That's not, what everybody not many. Says, so, so and if anybody's got any Ford Thunderbirds out there, like '89 through '97 series, that's really what I'm looking for. Let's look at the inside of this thing. Yeah, go for it. The seat belts expired in 1990. Oh, that's nice. Nice, huh? Yeah. I say the fire bottle had a charge probably. Back in 96, and that was that was probably when it went dead. <laughs> Bad gas. I've got about 14, 15 hours into this car so far, which isn't enough. This is where you need to be, man. When you get your other vehicle sorted out, this is where you need to get. Yeah, this thing's got some serious history. I see those Tiger Tom Pistone switch panels in a lot yeah. of old cars. And this car was uh, snouted at some point. Pete said he knocked the front end off of it, and they put a... Uh, Hutchinson and Pagan front snout on it huh. and it's their front snout number 301. They started building snouts after a while so That's about all I know. I mean, it's mostly a mutt. What's the engine in it? It's supposed to be a stock 350 Doesn't this, sound stock. Is this factory glass? Yes, sir. Did you put that in there? No, no, no. Uh, I'd say Right about 90s 91 92 is when they started putting glass in them. Someone on the internet will correct me. I'm sure but um I see a lot of cars like the Joe's 27 Pontiac. Yeah. It's supposed to have glass in it. Like factory front windshield? Yeah, they, they ran the glass for a long time. Really? So, and I like it because it doesn't yellow. It doesn't kind of flimsy. It doesn't scratch up and glare yeah. as much. So. Yeah, I noticed the LOF thing on the bottom corner there. there. I was go. like, oh, that's yeah. weird. That, that's what made me ask that. Man, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a factory grill. Just with just a mesh over it. I think it is. Right? And I'm not sure the crush panels were made that weren't made that great. I'm a heating and cooling tech, so I'll clean up all that sheet metal. Brake master cylinder, you think that's some sort of trick racing piece? Yeah. That's what they ran throughout the 80s and into the early 90s. That's a 1961 through 1966 F-250 master cylinder. <laughs> also the Ford Bronco and 64 65 Ford Mustang. Yeah, that's cool. You see those in a lot of uh, a lot of these things. Either with they have the extended canister or just the the little cap, the, the little dinker. So yeah. So when I bought it from Napa with the Napa replacement part, I brought it home and pulled the reservoir, pulled it, put reservoir on it, and suddenly now it's racing. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how it works. This thing is really freaking cool. I have oh, so, so many questions. Yep. What what's the what's the backstory on it? So it's a 1969 Ford Torino. <laughs> We found it in a barn near our shop in Mooresville. Uh, been restoring it for, I don't know, five, six years, I guess. The car last ran at Metrolina in the 80s. A guy named Tommy Crump, local guy, and uh, got it from Bobby Waywack, and we've been just tracing its history back and putting it back together the best we can. So how, um, how did you trace it back to being a Dick Trickle car? Well, we've really been trying to work with the Dick Trickle Memorial up in Wisconsin to help us with that. And I still need the guys to go look at it, but we were doing some work on the paint and it really was, you know, white, yellow, purple, and then the dark blue. So even though we couldn't confirm it, we went with what was on the lowest love layer of the car and we want to call it a, a tribute, so be it. That's Dick Trickle was an amazing driver. One more race isn't really anybody. I'm proud to be able to bring it out and show it to people. That, this is like the coolest thing ever that you just you found one of these in a barn. It's yep. like the stuff you read about. That's on camera. <laughs> what's uh 
what's the setup in it and everything. It's got a 427. That's not happy. Is it like a, a period correct setup and everything? Yeah, we can pull it open if you guys want. Yeah, that'd be cool. You got the, the paint can lids for the headlight covers. The real deal. We did some of the work at our shop, but Bill Ryan, Ryan Enterprises did most of the work for us. Okay. And it's a 427 tunnel port, four speed top loader. That's all the, the, the period correct stuff, like is it the right heads and everything that's it in is. there? It's, yeah. as, as close as it can be? Yes, it is. I haven't met Bill yet, but I know he's real particular about that stuff. Yeah, it is. That's so cool. We really did it. He did an amazing job on it. We had a, a buddy of ours, Leibless, he did all the hand lettering on the car. So we just tried to keep it as true to form as we could. Sleeveless Bob? Yeah. Yep. I notice that hand lettering every time we see one that has it now. Like, oh, that one's hand lettered. Yeah, Bob did a great job. That is, that's awesome. So what, how much of the components on here were on the car when you found it? It had all its sheet metal, uh, but we did put some different vendors on it and they were pretty far gone. But all the rest was the original metal that was on the car. Kenny Thompson, who used to work at Holman and Moody, a fabricator, made the wing for us. Uh, oil pan, things like that. So Kenny was really nice enough to do that for us. That's really cool. Yep. How does how does one find a hole in the switch panel like that? Well, uh, it took me like three years to find one, <laughs> and uh, and then we actually Kenny had a dash, so we used his dash as a pattern, and we we fabricated the dash after his original dash. Wow. That's that's crazy. Even just little stuff, like I think this is super cool how it has the, the overflow vent with the vent. Man. I mean, we did put a fire bottle in it, so it is set up for road racing and it has a little bit more safety equipment, obviously, than it would have had in the day. And what do we do and what do we don't do? Uh, you stay under 5,000 RPM. You don't pass the pace car. You don't punch it in second or third gear because it'll come around on you. And you just try to have a big smile on your face. Okay. And, and you don't do nothing don't stupid. Don't clip the apron. Don't yeah, do that. Don't, don't, don't do, do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> have you done that? I have not, but I, a lot of those marks on the wall are from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. That will turn your car real fast. Yeah. Everything's fine until it's not. So what's the what's the backstory of this car? The backstory on this car is this car belonged to Bobby Hillen's team in 1999. Uh, he wrecked it at Dover. He put a clip on it, and Bill Lester uh, drove it at Watkins Glen in 99 for the last time the car ever ran. Uh, hmm. Then they put it in moth balls and went through a couple different owners and that thing. Bill Lester confirmed the car because at the time he was the only uh, Bush series driver that knew how to do heel and toe because he was a road course expert. So he looked at the pedals and said, yeah, they cut them up especially for me so that he could do heel and toe shifting. Hmm. And uh, he's, he's a great guy, he lives down in uh, Atlanta as an engineer. We've, I've talked to him a couple of times, kept him up on the, the rebuild. I bought the car cheap, somebody had it, didn't even know the history of it. And once I started investigating the history, that's how Stock Car Classics got started. It's because I was like, every car's got a history. And uh, this car doesn't have a famous history, but uh, every car's got a history. The more I went into it, the more I got into it, shared it with a few people, and next thing you know, we got 20 cars out here. Hmm. Uh, so it's been fun. We're looking forward to We've had a great weekend, and everything goes well. We'll have twice as many cars next time. It sounds like a plan to me. I didn't notice that. So the fillers on this side because it was last a road course car huh that's cool was this a, a clean shower car yes. when it was at Watkins Glen 
No, there was no sponsorship at Watkins Glen's. It was solid yellow. Huh. They didn't have a sponsor. It was clean shower with Hillen earlier in the year, so I just went back with that. What's the engine in it? Uh, my history is my father built cup motors back in the 60s and 70s, so I built the motor. Huh. It's got a, it's a 355 with nice heads on it, solid roller cam. It's a good motor. Uh, I didn't, I mean, I don't have that much money into it, but it's a good motor and I'm happy with what it's doing. As busy as I am right now with the club and everything, I need a bulletproof car. <laughs> I really need a bulletproof car where I can come and play with it and let everybody have fun and I don't have to worry about maintenance. Let's see if I can fit in this thing. I think we went that fast around the track in my track last time we were here and it felt about that fast. This felt like we were going 30 miles an hour. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what it's made for. Did you that your drive got spit out? You gotta go see my car. Really? Blew hole, it blew a hole in the uh, floor pan. Blew the transmission apart. Ooh. It was, I mean, you, you grab the shifter now and you can like look down inside the transmission. Did you have fun? Yes. Was it's it awesome. terrifying? No. Less, it wasn't like Elvis. I less felt like scared than Elvis. Like tip over an Elvis. <laughs> Can you hear me in my hat? But first, Southie. <laughs> He's got white letter BFGs on there. White letters out. Gotta have the white letters out every time. I love this thing. That is so cool. Are these are the street tires or the load them up tires? <laughs> load them up tires. <laughs> Did you see the hole? the hole? Where's the Where hole? Yeah, great. Go around the passenger side. Look down oh there. god, I can see it. Yeah, the drive shaft came through that hole right there on the floor. <laughs> Bruh. Can you oh. imagine if that was like under his, his bed? It came up underneath my seat. Yeah, that that looks bad. like something I would do. Yeah, yeah it does. I've done things very similar <laughs> to that. Yeah, he's got a same God, it's yeah. terrifying. Wow. <laughs> and like put it right over top the, the shifter handle and then shake the handle back. Oh God! Yeah, it's. Is that like the petty car? Oh no, this is moving because the whole tail shaft is broken off. See, it's opened up. You see down in the gears. Yeah, I wish you could have had this thing out there. This would have been one of the coolest ones. Did anybody else drive it besides Marty Robbins? Is he the driver and the sponsor? How does that work? I don't know. Um, I know he. I've heard that he liked racing better than singing, but he had to sing to afford racing. <laughs> and there is, somebody pointed out that there's like petty blue paint underneath some of this. Yeah, there and he is. did get his cars from Richard Petty. Whether or not this is a real one or not, I have no idea. Um, I'd love to find out what the real history is on the car. Yeah, you can see that under there. That's very interesting. How would you figure that out? There's numbers, somebody pointed out there's numbers on the rails up in the front. And I don't know if they said to try and contact with Petty Enterprises and see if they know it. Oh, there's also, you can see the blue paint up there underneath the trunk. Oh yeah, you can right see there. a lot more in there. Yeah. Um, so 
Somebody told me to try contacting Petty Enterprises and see if they know anything about the numbers on the rails up front. I just bought it when I found it. It was local. It was only an hour away from me, and the price was right. Um, I showed my wife the ad. She's like, what the hell are you going to do with that? I was like, I don't know, but I got to have it. <laughs> That's a cool hood. Is that a factory hood, or do they add that bulge in there? Yeah, it's a factory hood with huh. the bulge like that. Huh. They also made, from the fact that they made a Ram Charger hood, they had a little door that would open and close in here. The numbers are up here on the rail. Hmm. Huh. need a good shot of that or not. I never even checked to see if they were the same on both sides. 208-828 is what's on this side. Maybe I'll take it to a couple car shows. And then I fell in with uh, Stock Car Classics and I found out they actually race these things. And I was like, wow, that would be awesome. So now I got to do uh, some different things to it to actually get it out on the track, make it safe. I, mean, I just threw something in it just to get it moving and, and driving under its own power. I'm tired of pushing it in and out, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. It sucks. If you like this kind of stuff, make sure you check out the other Rockingham videos. If you haven't seen them yet, we go over some more of the cars that were there that we didn't talk about this time. Yeah, just a little update here. If you've ordered something from the website and it hasn't shipped yet, this is why this wall wasn't here a week ago. We've had to keep everything packed away in bins to uh, keep it from getting messy while we build this place because... I'm not doing a hundred loads of laundry. I'm sorry, I'm just not gonna do it. Yeah, <laughs> we can't do that. Our one laundry machine's not that big. We kind of got squeezed out of our old shop quicker than we were told because the people we were uh leasing it from suck yeah they're like oh you <laughs> like you, you can take your time like you know no one's gonna force you out you can have it till like the 15th of november or something and they started putting crap in there while we were gone getting the rolls so we couldn't even like they were just made this really hard so we had to get everything moved over here much quicker than we anticipated and finish it because this place wasn't done yet so instead of waiting for the wall to get done we just had to like basically build it ourselves and we're doing all kinds of stuff in there too it's a big mess but we're getting there we're almost done really appreciate your patience um if you've had a pending order we'll give you some stickers or something to hopefully make up for it and if that doesn't make up for it i guess then we just suck but i think that you guys understand we're not like a big company or something we're just two people trying to do the best we can hard literally it's hard yeah we're gonna have a video going through doing all the shop stuff too building the wall painting it with um tom and everything so yeah just wanted to give you a little update <clears throat> and the rolls is uh, still on the trailer which is cool if you haven't seen the video on that go watch that we have a rolls rice now so we will see you very soon and once this whole fiasco is over, we'll be making videos a lot more regularly and we'll get to put the ice clay back together and all that stuff that we need to do. It's a lot. This past couple weeks have been really rough, but we're getting there. We're glad you're here for it. Who does she remind you of? Leave a comment. She doesn't even go here. <laughs>